Today I'm here to talk to you about obedience. <laughs> this is a word that most of us don't like. We do like obedient children. We do like obedient employees. We do like obedience. We just don't like our own obedience. And mostly that's because we have been conditioned into obedience. We have been conditioned into doing and thinking and saying and acting and feeling the way that the adults in our lives taught us to behave when we were children, the way that society and magazines and news and television have taught us and shown us and conditioned us into being. Even globally and the way social media suggests how we should be. And we often feel self-judgment and shame if we aren't obedient to those messages. And at the same time, we feel rebellious <laughs> against obedience, which I believe is a wonderful, beautiful thing. Your rebellion against obedience in so many ways is your ticket to freedom. So keep listening to that. Keep listening to the rebel inside of you that is telling you, hey, I don't want to do that and I don't like that and that doesn't feel good to me. And then let's go a layer deeper and let's look at your heart. Let's look at your soul. There's a reason the conditioning and the ways that you have been taught and told to be obedient, to edit yourself and literally sever whole parts of your beingness in order to be acceptable and loved and liked and approved of and belong and so on and so forth. There's a reason so much of that doesn't resonate. It's because your heart, your soul, your spirit, your beingness has a different message and it wants to be free. So going a layer deeper into obedience, it's not that obedience is bad. It's been misused against us to, to keep us in line so that we basically dim our light and we don't live from our fullness. And that's just because unconsciously that's what feels safe. It's nobody's fault. So how do you listen to your heart? How do you listen to your soul? And then obey what you hear there. The answer that I have found the only way is through practice. You know what it's like when you have ignored your intuition. When you were listening to your, when you didn't listen to that still small voice inside you that said, eh, Maybe we shouldn't do that thing. Maybe we shouldn't go to that place. Maybe, right? And then things did, really didn't go well. And you're like, ah, oh, I should have listened. <laughs> you know what it's like to not listen. So it can be a little harder to listen. But I think all of that not listening is one of your greatest teachers when it comes to learning to listen. Because you at least know what that voice sounds like. And your soul and your heart, they whisper. They're not aggressive, they're not demanding. They're, that judgmental voice that's like, oh, you should, 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 should. That's not your heart. Your heart would never speak to you that way. Your soul, spirit would never speak to you that way because it is by nature loving, open, free, kind. It is waiting for you to get still so it can speak. So the way that I practice this, and it is a practice, and I've been practicing this for years, I journal, I actually write letters to myself from my heart, from my soul. I also sit and I listen, like just in meditation and I just ask the questions, I let the questions come up and then I listen to, well it's not even really, you know, you know it's not really listening, it's inner listening to the first answer that comes up and usually it's the simplest answer and it's not giving a whole lot of clues. It's usually really, really simple and it brings a sense of peace and relief. So if you're asking questions and you're listening to that still small voice inside of you for answers, your heart, your soul, the answers are usually simple, basic. They bring relief and they resonate on such a deep level that at that point, when it comes to obeying that, 
it's not hard. It feels really, really good. I literally feel like spirit moving through me right now as I'm saying all of this. Another way too is I use a visualization. Um, I call it just an inner wisdom visualization where you can sit and just imagine yourself in a beautiful safe space. It can be inside, out in nature, whatever comes to mind for you where it's safe and comfortable. And then imagine that you are sitting across from your soul self your wise self, your highest self, whatever you want it to be, your divine self, you name it, your soul, your heart, any of it, that you are now sitting across from your deepest, wisest self. And see how your deep, wise self greets you with a smile, with love, with hugs. Maybe the, it manifests, this vision manifests as you, as you, and you just look, it's like looking in the mirror. Maybe it's an older version of yourself. Maybe your soul self looks totally different. <laughs> Let whatever comes, come. But then just sit with your soul, with your heart, your higher self, and ask your deep questions. And again, don't overcomplicate it. The thinking mind will try to be like, what's this mean? And cut, try to come up with the answers, but just listen to the simple, gentle voices that are coming up. It is a practice and don't beat yourself up. Total compassion, no judgment. If you hear things and you don't obey or it's difficult at this time and keep practicing, keep checking in, write those letters to yourself from your soul self, do that visualization, sit and listen, even take a breath and a moment before you do anything to go. Okay, what's the next best thing right now? I have this huge to-do list, but actually I really think I wanna go sit outside or I wanna take a nap. That feels really good, that sounds really good. And you're gonna have the voices in your head go, oh, maybe you shouldn't do that, you can't do that. And that's gonna create anxiety. If it's creating anxiety, if it's creating fear, if it's creating lack, if it's creating scarcity, that is not the still small voice, okay? Obey the voice that brings peace, that whispers love, okay? It will not lead you astray. You cannot be led astray by your own heart and your own soul. Okay? Okay. Oh, I could just cry and laugh and all of it at the same time because this is the essence of what it is to be yourself. I'm Jessica Amos. I'm a mindfulness teacher, a life transformation coach, and the founder of Stay With Yourself, which is the practice of being who you are, where you are, and so much of that is obedience, listening to your inner voice. Sending you so much love today. See you soon.